folk art in Cyprus is part of the history and tradition of the country. The island, because of its privileged geographical position, has, through the centuries, been a hub for commerce between the Occident and Orient, and a meeting point for many and varied cultures. From as far back as the Neolithic age, Cypriot artisans used to make stone and clay vessels of exquisite form and texture. The wealth and quality of Cypriot handicrafts can be witnessed by the visitor at the island's archaeological and folk art museums. Pottery in Cyprus is considered one of the most ancient professions. Despite the many influences to which the island was subjected, it assimilated and created its own distinct style, which apart from slight and normal changes, remains almost unaltered through the millennia of Cypriot history. The working of the wheel itself, the shaping and etching of the vessels, their smoothing and firing, as well as temperature control methods in the kiln, remain the same for thousands of years now. Until 1940, the famous in-situ pots for storing wine, oil and water used to be made. They were so large that sometimes artisans would first make the pot and then build a cellar or house around them. Today, pottery is more sentimental or artistic and less utile in value. With the advent of the 20th century and the sudden transition from an agricultural society to our modern-day information society, the continuation of pottery constitutes a challenge and, some say, a scandal. Basket weaving has also changed little through the centuries. It remains essentially the same since Neolithic times, given that it's a process carried out only by hand, without the use of machinery. Cyprus's nature has helped the development of basket weaving, bountifully providing the raw materials such as cane, osier, lentis and other plants necessary for this art. Wood carving in Cyprus bears influences from the broader Hellenic world, and offers an inexhaustible field of artistic creation. One comes across everything, from the simplest forms to the most intricate. Because of their high cost, however, the most intricate works are encountered in ecclesiastical art. An excellent example of urban wood carving is the house of Dragoman Hagiorgakis Cornesios, the official translator appointed during the Ottoman rule of Cyprus by the Sultan. Tradition would have it that silk was brought to Cyprus from Constantinople during the Byzantine era, with its production technique being immutably handed down from generation to generation ever since. The boiling water dissolves the cocoon's glue-like substance and separates the constituent fibers. Each silk farm can produce some 30 to 40 kilos of silk daily, with a single cocoon possibly yielding up to 700 meters of continuous thread. One of the most widespread and traditional professions in Cyprus, practiced for centuries now, is weaving. During the Frankish period, Cyprus was considered the largest production center for silk and gilt-woven materials. Nine out of the 14 kinds of cloth produced in the world at the time were made in Cyprus. After 1571 and with the beginning of the Ottoman rule of Cyprus, cloth production ceased, and those involved in the profession found an outlet in producing the dowries for brides-to-be. Many were the maidens who sat at the loom, weaving their own dowry, until they reached adulthood and wed. Lefkara is a semi-mountainous village in the Larnaca district. Despite its few residents, it has gained worldwide fame for its unparalleled lace. From the beginning of the 20th century, however, Lefkara has become famous not only for its lace, but also for its exquisite silverwork.
Silver smithery has existed in Cyprus since Mycenaean times. It's one of the few crafts which have not been particularly threatened with extinction. This may be due to the abundance of churches on the island and their demand for ecclesiastical vessels and utensils, but also because of the prestige lent to each household by silverware. Filigree, an ancient technique employing the interweaving of two fine strands of silver, was imported to Cyprus thousands of years ago from ancient Egypt and survives to this day. It's a painstaking and time-consuming process and its success is entirely dependent on the artisan's talent. One of the most humble professions, albeit with exceptionally aesthetic results, is the decoration of water gourds. In it, they would carry water or wine, and its small weight rendered it easily transportable. The decoration of their gourds lent the vessels a particular appearance, raising them to veritable works of art. The gourd is etched using a red-hot skewer or knife, with the design being blackened with soot dissolved in oil. On washing the gourd, the soot-oil mixture remained embedded in the etched area, defining the specific design. With the end of World War II, however, and the rapid development of industrial methods, Cyprus's handicraft scene underwent a radical change. Cypriot society, bedazzled by the imported way of life, failed to appreciate the beauty of its own folk culture and thus abandoned a centuries-old tradition. In the present day and times, however, whether due to a sense of nostalgia or in reaction to the intensely typified way of life, the need for authenticity arose. And so, just before some professions vanished forever, the Folk Art Museum and the Cyprus Handicraft Centre were established, both of which lent new breath to the traditional professions of Cyprus, saving at literally the very last moment the centuries-old cultural heritage of the island.